Get back here. Welcome to Brunch. It's the podcast where uh, we've actually got a little special guest. We're going to bring in a new element, a little thing. As long as we keep it from kind of running around and going crazy, it should be a good, safe episode. That's right. Yeah, we just want to keep a, keep a, a leash on Keep things. a lid on it. Yeah. Just, what if it gets away? <laughs> <laughs> then you, you call the police. Whoa, we could call the police. We uh, have that oh, functionality. Shit. That's true. Or we could call a hospital. Oh, Jail or hospital. Police station or hospital. Oh, yeah, that's right. Fuck. I Police love it. Station. Uh, we're recording this uh, on Sunday day because we want to get the episode to you a little earlier this week because it's uh, it's Thanksgiving week. Ah, uh, yes. Famously. I'm going to get some pie. Put some on your head. <laughs> <laughs> For me, Marie Callender's. You know what I'm going to do? Maybe go to Marie Callender's. Get myself up. Pie. Pie. Ice cream. <laughs> Put some on your head. <laughs> your brain, what do you say? Your tongue will wrap around your head trying to get to it. <laughs> sure. Uh, if you haven't, folks, if you haven't watched Geely yet, watch I, it. Incredible movie. I spoke about Geely so much the last day. I don't know why. There were so many things that led to Geely references. And I'm, fuck, I'm glad that we actually just arrived on that because I was going to forget to fucking tell you this. I was at a restaurant in Boston, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and near me was a table of people who, not to judge or stereotype, they probably say the boys a lot. I say the boys a lot. I say the. I mean, I watch a hockey game. I yell the boys <laughs> yeah. six times a game because the Bruins score six times a game. That I mean, they're the best. They've team been in the going world. mambo number five on that ass. <laughs> it is fucking crazy. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good uh go on with your restaurant story uh was yeah. that the, was that it uh, yeah so i'm at this restaurant and you just did you just like uh what do they call it um Drop it. Did, you, did you deconstruct mambo number five yeah that i like that isolating vocal. vocals <laughs> that's my favorite part about <laughs> mambo number five no i've uh i want to start saying like so and so went mambo number five like the man bruins Going Mambo number five on everybody right now. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't want to play them. Mm -hmm. Famously, Mambo number six, though, because they scored that six goals. That is true. They game. scored six goals. Um, but this is incredible. Uh, I'm at a restaurant. It's a table full of dudes near me. It's like eight white dudes. And yeah, it's Boston. Yeah. And I hear them getting progressively louder and progressively louder. And I'm mid conversation with somebody. And I stop and I go, wait, hold on a second. And I start mouthing along what they're doing. And the person I'm speaking to is like, what's going on here? Is this some sort of prank? A young man at the table near me in a restaurant, in a quiet restaurant where people are trying to live their lives, is passionately delivering Ben Affleck's monologue from the town about it's never going to be you and me and Shine playing fucking house get and i'm like oh he's about to yell and then he does he get that through your fucking head <laughs> it was the best his table erupted they're like really saturdays are for the boys and and i knew i was like if this guy's anything like me and pete he's gonna do this again too because he's like feeling this and yeah. he kept doing this thing <laughs> he's yelling get that through your fucking head and we we're trying to figure out we we're like are these guys from boston or are they like doing a bit because they're maybe they're like boston. we're in boston yeah. let's start hey, let's try to blend in it's never gonna be you <laughs> and me and your sister and fucking shine play at house get that through your fucking head it doesn't even matter where they're from because that's a cool move regardless it was great i loved it and then later con same conversation same person i hear her. i'm like oh wait a second Sorry, they're talking about Tangerine, Florida. They are still talking about the oh town. Oh, my God. When he lived, he leaves yeah, a right. tangerine in the bag. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, man, yo, want to watch the town? <laughs> the town <laughs> rocks. Did you watch the town? I didn't go on oh, to watch okay. the town. That's, I, I mean, continued to socialize with human beings, but 
I didn't want to. I wanted to watch did, the town. Did you address the table? No. Oh, okay. That's, Although that's I was surprising. Perilously I, close. Yeah. I said to my friend, I was like, I'm perilously close. I'm to I'm honestly shocked that joining you did, that table. Number one didn't address the table, and number two just didn't abandon whoever you were with. Just join them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Everybody can make do. That was, Everyone's nice here, right? I'm just gonna duck over to that table. That was a nice little twist ending because I thought when you uh were disparagingly just describing this table as uh they use the boys a lot. No, I was just like you could just tell them I'm like that they say the boys. Yeah, but when you say when you use that but as to, a like, descriptor, refer to each other. Right, yeah. I still I mean I do that like Tom Giles and I say the boys a lot. I say the boys. We call a like ton. everybody the boys. Yeah. Be like, we watching the boys tonight? Ugh. Wait, they chunked it last week. Wait, who are we talking about? Ah, Trump it. Trump it. <laughs> Trump it. That's that one if you want to use it at any point. Trump it. It's all good. Dump it. Ah. It was good. What's your favorite uh, Mambo number five? It's got to be that. It's that one? It's gotta be. You know what's a sneaky I wanna, good one? I wish I was there when he was recording that in studio. Yes. You know what's a good one? Mambo number five. <laughs> he does a spoken one during the... That's a fucking good song. It's a great song. And it's good to... Lou Bega, famously German. Is he? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, he's German. Wow. Now, was he... He was like the singer of that, right? Yeah. Okay, I just didn't know if he played the... Drop it! <laughs> what a song. It's he talks about... Song. Hey, women be having names. Also... Drop it! <laughs> Did you know that Lou Bega mm-hmm. is his middle name? Lou Bega is his yes, middle name. Yes, yeah. David Lou Bega Balamazi. Oh, that's cool. So he does a Jason Derulo thing. What's Jason Derulo? Girulo. Oh, it's kind of like that. Oh, no, and more of a Louis C.K. thing. Right, yeah, like Louis C.K. masturbates yeah. in front of strangers. <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> Trump it. <laughs> Sorry, more man. Like, I got More like trombone the way he's pulling that yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, no, so Jason Derulo is just a phonetic spelling of his last name, which is like D E S. R E L E A U X. He's got like a way oh, okay, cooler spelling, yeah. but instead he goes by Jason Derulo. Louis C.K. is, uh, I think his last name is like Sikalik or something. And it's like, there's like some C's, there's yeah. some Z's. It's a, a real, it's a real Peter uh, Gross, Gross guy. The, the, he's the, one of the Sonic guys. Famously is in a movie we're going to talk about oh, today. Yeah. 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 Um, if we can get off of Mambo number five. Boy, oh boy. Uh, it's Thanksgiving week, though. It is. You ready to go ham on some turkey? No, I'm not having turkey this year. Really? Yeah, we're skipping it all together. Nice. Are you... Will you do stuffing? Yes. Stuffing is Stuffing is good. Uh, not a cranberry sauce guy. I am. Yeah. I'm like a... I think I'm everything, but uh, I, I squash? Get the fuck out of here with squash. Don't like squash. Uh, I've recently come around on stuffing. Not a cranberry sauce guy. Not like a lot of Thanksgiving foods, honestly. Damn. I hate to say it. I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. <laughs> I thought I knew you, and then you said that you didn't like cranberry sauce, and I was like, I hate to sound ridiculous. I don't know who you are anymore, man. You just man. said you don't like cranberry sauce i uh, know i do oh, okay. okay good for you dump it <laughs> want to talk about wrexham or want to talk about oh the menu threw threw my phone down and it landed in the on, penis landed on my right ball <laughs> ah <laughs> ouch um yeah well, i started watching uh welcome to wrexham last night and i'm only like three episodes in but it's very good it's very cute it's, it's a very, very cute. cute show and I can't tell though, like if it's it's staged and like it some, is. yeah, like scripted to a degree. Yeah. It's got to be. Um, yeah. People want to know. Everyone's asking me about the uh, the big blowout that we had last week. There is a tie-in to our big fight with okay. Welcome to Wrexham. When you said you asked me to, you recommend something to me, and then I thought you were going to say something that Tom Giles recommended Wrexham to me, and then he was recommending it like every week, and I hadn't watched it, hadn't watched it. And he yeah, was it like, sounds like you. Hey, I'm going to be real with you. You recommend stuff to people, and they do it. And I was like, yeah, I'm a fucking tastemaker. Try it for once in your life. And he was like, 
I've recommended Wrexham to you, and it seems like you haven't even considered it. Yes. And I was like, damn. So I don't know. Like, I look myself in the mirror, like, not intentionally, but when it comes to content, I'm kind of a selfish lover, so I'm working on that. So when you said that about Andor, of like, surprise, surprise, you haven't watched Andor, even yeah. though you're still recommending stuff to me, and I'm watching it, that's where I thought you were going. But because we deal with each other way more frequently you had like friendship shit built into it that also <laughs> and then you began to lie and yeah, I, shut if, up. <laughs> if you haven't heard the episode last week uh but people have been responding to some of your tweets and snitch tagging yes, me yeah and saying like this true hey it's possible this is a lie yeah. dj can you give us any help here yeah i i do like that trend like i'm okay with 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 the way that things went last week i think that you got a little too defensive and i think now it makes sense it, you had a built-in, you had a built-in like uh, I have to be defensive about this because I know it's true. Oh, but part of it was true. Yeah, and that that like I send you Tim Heidecker stuff is true. Uh, that which is you mentioned you're watching Wrexham. I'm mm. watching On Cinema. Mm -hmm. I know, buddy. <laughs> I'm aware. Check it out. There is this guy Greg Turkington, and he is so frustrated the whole time. Tim took his van. He got a van to do movie tours around L.A. And Tim took the van to go on tour with his band Decker. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man, they've been sniping at each other on Twitter. Uh, he had to, ca uh, Greg had to cancel all of his tours for the <laughs> weekend. And Tim was like, oh, sorry, the one person who bought a ticket will be really upset. They're really mean to each other. There's Greg hats, they go after Tim. There's people that say, hey, you don't even like movies. Why are you even doing this show if you just want to talk about other stuff? Yeah. It's a real <laughs> it's a real soap opera. Okay. If I'm uh, being honest. I did get a lot of texts after last week's episode saying, uh, you're right, Andor is great, but also you should be watching on cinema. Yes. I also I saw people doing that. I, I saw somebody so I tweeted the other day or earlier last week that like I hadn't heard of on cinema, never watched it late to a lot of Tim Heidecker stuff, but on cinema's great. And somebody quote tweeted with like, I'm so, this is so tough that my mortal enemy is so right about this. Mm -hmm. So I engaged the person. I was like, oh, and their name was like five bags, which uh, their rating system is. Okay. How many bags of popcorn oh, right. do you yeah, yeah. give it? Their name was the, uh, PD five bags or something, mm -hmm. and they were clearly into on cinema and everything. So I was like, "Oh, this person doesn't like me. It's got to be for sports stuff. I'm gonna win them over." And so I responded, "Is this about the sports jokes? Because that's always what it is." Yeah. So you you made fun of Mac Jones. Yeah. You made fun of the Patriots, and you're not allowed to joke about sports. Uh, and he responded, "Oh, shit, my bad. I didn't know that you made jokes. Your music makes a lot more sense now." burn what a he, fucking asshole he hated your music so i responded and I, I don't delete tweets but i responded oh jesus get a life and then i took it down because that was that's meaner than so but that's he, like so he disliked you because he because he hated your music th so there are people that dislike that i do things other than sports like there are people that like don't like that i do brunch and there's probably a lot of people that don't like that i do brunch. <laughs> yeah. you don't like that i do brunch uh but there yeah and uh so, oh, why would you stick to they movies? They got mad blah, when blah, blah, blah. Uh, I did the... This is, this is like, what fucking losers? But they, like, who could care about me? Uh, they got mad when I did the video with Spike. Uh, oh, really? What the they're fuck? They're like, oh, like, so, oh, so you're funny now? You're like an actor or whatever? And I'm like, I just, I always try to do weird things. And like the music thing, I was like, hate to break it to you. I've been fucking goofing around with music longer than I've been talking about also, sports. Also, that was like a COVID project. Like, and what like, were you doing? And also, like, who cares? Sorry for having a hobby. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that's, Cry such about a, it. that's such a wild thing to criticize oh, somebody for. That, so that's like a, a, a big contingent of the uh, Patriots yeah, crybabies. Crazy. I mean, I did see, I have seen, like, people make fun of you for, like, Vineyard Nights and stuff. Yeah. But it's like, I didn't know it was, like criticizing you having a music hobby i thought it was just saying i mean like, stick to vineyard nights or something like no that. like they'll say like i mean they'll, they'll say it sucks or whatever that's fine but they'll be like oh guess he's back to like oh sorry vineyard nights didn't work out talking about sports again <laughs> i'm like what a fuck my god that's wild i've gotten like like stick to movies or like 
stick to like anything, but never like a wow you you do video games or whatever. Like yes, th- that shit's weird. So that would be yeah. So if if it were my case, people probably don't hate you as much as they only because you don't deal with Boston sports fans as much as I do. Yeah, if you and, did, and, they'd hate and you. And I don't like intentionally try to piss them off. Other than like the Tuca stuff is when like I intentionally try to piss off those dummies. I just I'm such a baby, but it's like all right, if you're gonna lie about Mac Jones being good, I'm gonna lie about a <laughs> bunch of stuff. Well, I mean, I'll go full Blackburn on your ass. I'll take the, this the, to Mambo number five. The maybe. thing is, they'll they'll never apologize, but those people are like starting to turn on Mac Jones. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. They'll most, never apologize to you. Exactly. I, it's a no-win situation for you. Unfortunately. Somebody at work the other you were day right brought all up. Along, yeah, yeah. But, oh, <laughs> my friend Josh, who works at DraftKings, hates so much that, like, beat for beat, word for word, I fucking nailed it on Mac Jones. <laughs> yeah. Which so did you. You were just like, I don't think this guy's very good. Then the Patriots drafted him, and you were like, still don't think he's very yeah, good. No, like, I, I. That's didn't. all. I didn't. That is. I didn't change my opinion because of the laundry, which people do a lot. My brand this year was going to be though obnoxiously rooting for Mac Jones because I knew he was going to stink this year because the coaching was getting worse. So I was going to be like, I was going to be the no Mac Jones is fucking good guy, but I was like, people are dumb. They're going to think that I'm actually serious. Mm-hmm. So, uh, welcome to Wrexham is cute though, man. It is. Uh, it's. I, I am distracted by number one, like how good the production value is and how good the characters are. Mm-hmm. Cause it's just like, I'm, I don't know why, but like as of recently, I've been doing this a lot, being like, eh, this isn't real. And it bothers me. Like I did that with like Love is Blind. I'm like, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody's watching the show and being like, ah, that's not real. Oh. But like, but I'm like, I'm like, my brain is attaching itself to like production stuff. May I too ask much. you if, you're smoking pot while doing yes. this. Yes. Yeah. That's it, uh, at least in my experience, that's like a side effect of pot. Yeah. It like makes me think too deeply about Where I'll it. I'll just be like, what? Yeah. Oh my God. Shut the fuck up with that. That's so bull- N- bullshit. No, it's more, for me, it's more like really paying attention to like the production and like the way things are shot or like, and being like, there's no way that they could do this naturally. There's no way that this could be filmed naturally. Yeah, and like the the scenes and like the outs are like way too convenient and clean, and I'm like, mm, this, this is bothering me. Want to be Wrexham truthers? Let's go to Wrexham <laughs> yeah. and just be like, oh, I don't see Rob McElhenney. They're like, he doesn't live here. He comes here like what? He, even in the year. show, he yeah. d- like doesn't come here. He's much. wearing the same outfit in every scene that he's in. He was here once for like ten minutes. <laughs> Man, no, but it's a good show, and uh, I'm I'm trying to get out of my head so much and. It just it it does seem to have like too many Ted Lasso qualities to it, where it's like they intentionally shaped it around that. Yeah, so I I told my parents to watch it because I was like, it's a kind of real life Ted Lasso sort of thing. Yeah, World Cup is coming up. It this is. is our World Cup preview episode, by the way. It's already like hope ruin- everyone's enjoying it. It's already like ruining my life because uh, yesterday our pal Jeff. Uh, extended an invite to go oh, yeah. with him to a bar uh, at noon o'clock. Yeah. And on a Monday, I don't work very often, but I do work Mondays. Oh, really? Yeah. I work Monday mornings. Yeah. I also don't work very no. often. Don't listen to this Bally Sports. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah Hit I'm the like, Patreon, by the way, for when our jobs realize we are very much. <laughs> yeah. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. We have a bonus episode that came out yesterday. Uh, the bonus episode is we're just going to call some people, okay. I think. Yeah? yeah, yeah Why don't cool. just call people? Yeah, sure. I'm going to like text them a second before and say, can we call you? Okay, cool. Who do you want to call? Uh, Will DeFreeze. Uh, for me, I want Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters? That's who I'm going to call. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bust. I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Busting That's... makes me feel good. You've heard that, right? Yes. I'm trying to bust. I'm trying to... Come. Drop it! <laughs> we, <laughs> I like the idea that like we never figured we just were able to get two drops on to this. So I would totally be fine with those being the only two drops that we have. <laughs> Today's drops are <laughs> and <laughs> whoops, it's drop it and also <laughs> drop it. That should that should be our new thing is that we should only have two drops every single week, but every single week they're different. Do you think listeners are laughing when we're doing the drop? I bet yeah, they're... Yeah, for sure. Uh, drops make me giggle. Yeah, same. Like, as we're doing it, but... If I'm like, they're if good I'm drops. Yeah, if I'm listening to Circling Back, I laugh at, I'm trying to bust, I'm trying to come. 
every time. What could she have been trying to say? Those aren't even close to what the lyrics of that. No, I had no idea. I'm trying to bust. I'm trying to go. <laughs> Such a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I'm getting cooked. <laughs> hockey fans, hockey season is here. The ice has been hit once again, and thanks to DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you're in for a season of a lifetime. Ah! New customers can bet $5 on any team and get $200 in free bets if they win. Uh, plenty of games this week. Famously, Black Friday game, uh, Bruins and Hurricanes Are you going to go? Week. I'm thinking about it. I'm already I doing... I feel like that's a hot ticket, though. I mean, you know that I'm already going to see uh, Dirk Nowitzki against Paul Pierce Correct. on Wednesday. So am I really going to go to two games? Who knows? Maybe if we can luck our way or score our way yeah. into some tickets. Those are hot tickets, though. The Dope. Black Friday matinee always mm -hmm. kind of hits. Uh, if that wasn't enough excitement, you can turn small bets into bigger payouts with same game parlays. Combine multiple bets like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more for your shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So dra download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code WASHED. Bet $5 on any NHL team to win their game and get $200 in free bets if they do. That's code WASHED at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Bang. Trumpet. There we go. Trumpet. Uh, you want to talk about the menu? Yes. The menu is a 2022 American black comedy thriller directed by Mark Mylod. That sounds right. Who's he? He person. is known for his work on the television series Succession and Shameless. Damn. He's a British television film director and executive producer. This uh, film centers on the island of Hawthorne, where celebrity chef... What's the guy's name? Chef Slowick. Slowick. Julian Slowick. Yes, he's got a private island and that is funded by an angel investor. Mm -hmm. That's never For good. how long? That's never good. Yeah. Whenever an angel investor comes into play, you're yeah. like, mm, a little something, dicey. Something might be going on here. Where there's an angel, there's a devil. Ooh, that's a bar. Trumpet. Um, well, we'll uh, we'll do a uh, spoiler review, but like, let's get into just the plot a little bit, okay. and then whether or not we liked it before so, we get into spoilers. Margot is brought by Tyler to this exclusive night of going Dining to Hawthorne. Experience. Yeah, he's going to make the menu. Slowick's going to make the menu, and a bunch of people are there. There's a real Gilligan's Island type of... Uh, you take a boat to the island. There's like a, there's like a famous or like a washed-up actor. Yeah, it's um, like... Finance bros. It's like $1,200 a head or a plate. So it's like a very exclusive, high, snobby, yeah. uh, high society, snobby sort of uh, deal. So they take a boat over to the island, it's like very quiet, very serene, but like very mysterious. There's like a um, everybody lives there. Yeah, the, the people. staff is is kind of like very uptight and like sort of like a military almost sort light of culty vibes. Yeah. You got washed up actor played by John Leguizamo. You've got a big time film critic and her editor, food the, critic. Sorry, Phil, uh, food critic. Uh, as you said, finance bros, The these two people who are Julian Slowick's most uh, frequent customers. They're just like an old married couple that have money. Yeah. And then there's this guy, Tyler, who brings Margot, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, and he's just a foodie's foodie. Mm -hmm. Obsessed. Knows about all the... By all the, the chemistry and everything that goes into the stuff, he's crazy about it. And... As the night goes on, with each passing course, you find this ain't any dining experience. This could be a dying experience if people aren't careful. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, it's a very uh, it, it ramps up intensity with every course, and like some some weird stuff starts happening, and uh, you, you're trying to figure out what the hell the end go, end game is here, and like what's going on. A critique I'll have of this movie is that. It gives you the end game very kind of matter of factly. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a big thing. There in the end game is that this is going to be Julian Slowick's final meal. He's going to kill everybody, including himself. He's going to take this whole fucking thing down. And that's just kind of dropped like 45 minutes into the movie. You're like, oh, like this is what's happening. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, I thought that was going to be like a big 
revelation. But I guess you should realize bit by bit, it's like this is getting weirder. This is getting more dicey. A man has just shot himself in front of these people. I guess we're getting into spoilers now. Yeah, this this <laughs> okay. this, this will contain spoilers. Uh, this I I was very much looking forward to this movie. Obviously, Ray Fiennes plays Slowick. It's an extremely well cast movie. Hong Chow plays Elsa, who is the um, the maitre d. Would mm-hmm. it be? Yeah, and the hostess, and she honestly is like as good as Ray Fiennes in this movie. And Ray Fiennes is perfect for this role. He's like the only person that could have played it. Maybe Kevin Spacey, honestly, but. We don't really toss him jobs these days. I was it's, very much looking is it for Ray Fines or is it Ralph Fines? Rafe. Rafe. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I I had this high on the list. It was this and Don't Worry Darling, before the, all the Don't Worry Darling drama of like, I cannot wait to see these fucking movies. And this isn't a Blumhouse movie. It isn't an A24 movie, but it kind of does that sort of thing. This is has been very very well received by critics, yeah. and it's not that great. No, I, I was I was shocked that like so I, I went into it with very very high expectations, like you. But I only went into it with really high expectations based off of the recent reviews. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of recent reviews saying that like this movie is like nearly perfect, or it's like um um what was the 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 uh, Vince Mancini whole quote that i gave you it's like it's one of those movies one of those rare movies that seems like it's like fully executed yeah like yeah fully the, uh, like, realized they did everything they wanted to do yeah and so i was like ooh, very cool because like the the trailers are really mysterious and it looks like a thriller and i'm very into that and i i enjoyed it but it it was really for me like not much more than just like a fancy blumhouse movie I totally agree. It's a better cast Blumhouse movie. Yeah, like there are some things that they do really well, and casting is one of them. It's a really well acted and well cast movie. I thought like almost everybody was perfect in their roles. Yeah, and I mean if if you put Ray Fines in like the, the the most direct comparison I have for this movie is Saw Six. It had like the the social commentary of a Saw sequel and it's a way better movie than Saw Six, but it's closer to that than it is to like Midsommar, which I think it. Yeah, there's nothing like wants super to... deep, but like it does have somewhat valuable commentary a yeah, little bit, but not completely. Cr- I mean, it's commentary that's being decreed by an insane person, right? Like Slowick isn't a reliable narrator or whatever you want to call it. Like his logic isn't all correct. This is a guy that's at the end of his rope and he's decided. I'm taking all this shit down because my talent has gotten me to a place where I only serve rich assholes or people who come here because they think it's a thing to do and they don't care about the food or a kid like Tyler who is so fucking obsessed with everything that I can't fucking make a sandwich without hearing him say oh and then he's layering the blah blah he's like i'm just fucking making a sandwich yeah. suck my dick man this is an art get off my back but what he does with the tyler character is like incorrect he i think there's a lot of uh a lot of overreacting to yeah. the characters that he like gets yeah so in the case of tyler he has him and this is a spoiler whatever but he has him uh he's like hey you know all about this food right and he's like, yes, everything. And he's like, okay, you you make the next course. And I let out like a, oh, fucking come on. Yeah, that's he's like saying, not a chef. He doesn't, this kid right. doesn't say he's a chef. He's a fan. That's like saying like, yeah, like, uh, like, oh, you think you know everything about hockey? Why don't you, la- why don't you lace him up and play? It's like, no, you can, you can like critique and uh, analyze something without claiming that you know how to do it. I don't want to see fucking Rafe. I don't want to see Julian Sloak's tweets about uh, Mina Kimes. Yeah. He's probably doing the like, this person isn't playing, isn't currently playing in the NFL, so they don't know what they're talking about. It's like, eh, she's like a hundred times smarter than everybody else doing this. Uh, But it's the same logic. Or it's like the... uh, I mean, I you know that I have a tough relationship with like music critics who don't know what any of the stuff is. Yeah. But that kid at least like knows what the stuff is. Right. But he's not gonna. He can't fucking make you a 
cooked a nice right. dish. Right. And he's not claiming to. Right. Yeah. I had no problem with. I, I didn't. I mean, I wouldn't say I would have oh, so no problem. By the way, with- to finish the thought, he has him cook a meal that's terrible, and then he whispers in his ear, why don't you go kill yourself? And he does. And then, then the and kid goes and kills, kills himself. himself. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Horrible. <laughs> um, I mean, it, that's not the worst, uh, most egregious murder here, because uh, Nicholas Holt's character does intentionally hire a an escort that he knows is going to die. Yes, his girlfriend dumps him, so yes. he brings... An escort instead. Yes, right. And like knowing that they're both going to die at this restaurant, which is bananas. Trash so, move, man. Very trash move. Not which, cool. Which is why I was like, not like, mm, this is a little egregious. The one that I thought was very egregious is uh, him killing John Languizamo's character because he didn't like a movie that he was in once. Yes, but so th- that I think makes me feel better about the movie where it's like, okay, so they should all know and we should all understand. This guy's out of his mind. Yes. Like, th- he's really going to kill this guy because he didn't like a movie he was in. And he kills John Leguizamo's assistant because he's like, wait, I don't even really know much about you. Where'd you go to college? Yeah. Which is Brown. And says, student loans? No. Funniest part of the movie. He yeah, says, that was pretty funny. Yeah, you're dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, and then uh, he kills uh, the old couple because... Although they dine with him a lot, they don't really pay attention to the food that they're eating, yeah. and the husband cheats on the wife, and I'm like, why are you killing the wife then? Yeah. Like, if there's anybody that did something wrong there, it's the guy for cheating on his wife, but like, that's their problem, not yours. You don't have to kill them both. And also, like, the wife not remembering uh, like the last meal that she ate at your restaurant, she's old. I don't remember the last meal that I eat at most restaurants. Big Saw 6 vibes where that's the health insurance one. And the guy, he has the guy who's like the head of the health insurance company uh, go through this thing. And every stop of the, the trap, he has to basically choose between two people. And it'll be like his subordinates. And he'd be like, hey, this older woman doesn't have much family. So you should let her die, right? Or do you let this young man live? And it's like, oh, neither of those people did anything. Yes. They yeah. just simply have a job. But that's a social commentary about like health insurance choosing who's yeah. worth living and who's not. Yeah. So like I get that more than I get this. But like those people don't fucking deserve it. Right. But that's the commentary. Yeah. It's like the health insurance is like, even if you don't deserve it, you'll still get fucked over. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I thought this movie was okay like it didn't make any like poignant social commentary in my mind i i think that like the characters were very good um the the pacing was a little too slow for me at points it takes about 50 minutes as i said yeah. for it to get where it needs to start going and like it tells you that it's going there yeah so big time. like it's like okay what are we what are we waiting for here yeah and it moves somewhat quickly after that i don't understand a lot of the exercises that they like, agree like the the, the mom the, thing i didn't need at all yeah and like the chasing yeah it's like you can get away they just did like a like a little goose hunt yeah and i don't i didn't really understand that i thought that they were going to kill them as soon as they caught them no yeah. they just brought them back I, it's weird it's like a, it's almost like a waste of time i i i liked this movie it was not great uh it's not super duper memorable like I'm, I'm, I'll remember it when it's brought up in like a year or two, but I'm not going to be constantly thinking about it. I'll probably see it again in theaters, and I don't know why. Yeah, I don't have any interest in doing it. I, uh, Anya Taylor-Joy was great in this movie, by the way. Oh, Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to... There's a s'mores thing that is excellent. The burger thing I thought was very whack. It was lame. Very was lame. super lame. Yeah. Um, as I said... Ray Fiennes is on a very short list of people who could have done that. Do you and want he to was ex- excellent. Do you want to explain the uh, the burger thing? I mean, if we're getting into like the movie. Yeah, and sure. Uh, just that uh, she realizes her own... She wasn't supposed to be there. Yes. She was the replace... She was the escort. She, Anya Taylor-Joy is the escort that replaced um, Nicholas Holt's ex-girlfriend yeah uh, he hires her to go to uh this restaurant to be and the he fill-in. was let in on he's the only person at that dinner that was told 
everyone's going to die. Yeah. Which I don't believe because he was such a fanboy that he would have like done something that made it obvious that he was in on this. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, she, uh, Slowick doesn't know what to do with her because he's like, shit, you weren't supposed to be here. Everything was planned around certain people being here. Who the fuck are you? And then he realizes, he's like, hey, you're in the service industry. I can tell. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I jerked off that guy over there. Yeah. Um, she watched him while he jerked off. That's it. Correct. Yes. And he doesn't know what to do with her, but he's inclined to have her stay and die with everybody else. And then in a twist of brilliance, she realizes I should treat this guy like a customer at a restaurant. And she's a shitty customer. She's uppity. She tells him, like, your food has sucked. Uh, I'd rather just, you know, just fucking bring me a cheeseburger if you can even do that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, something switches with him. And he's like, I can do that. Because there's a picture of, there's like all these pictures that she saw of him. And like the only one in which he's smiling. Yeah, like the first job that he had it was like a like making cheeseburgers, yeah. making burgers, and like he was talking about how like when he first got into the industry, he was happy to serve people and see them be happy. Yeah, uh, and like provide that happiness to them. So like by her uh, her showcasing that she was unhappy and then asked for something personal. Yeah, he was happy to do it. And see her be a satisfied customer for the first time, which is like ultimately, I guess, all he wanted was to have satisfied customers. Yeah. And uh, he finally got one. And so in return, he let her go. Yeah. She takes one bite of it, says, uh, That's a good burger. I'm afraid my eyes are bigger than my stomach. Can I get I'll it to go? To take it to go. And everyone, like, I, I think it's kind of, I like the moment where she leaves and kind of looks back at them and everyone's like, very resigned to their fate. Yeah. They're like, we are literally toast. Yes. You go, though. Yeah. They're like, good for you. Yeah. Hell yeah. She got out. Uh, Which I do not buy. The, I don't know. Because all of those were like horrible people. Yeah. The food preparation is great. It's not quite chef vibes, but no. when he makes that burger, that looks good. It looks good. incredible. Yeah. Although, four slices of cheese. Yeah, but it was a double patty. Still, you doing four slices of cheese? Yeah, because you want to get you want to get the uh, the corner. Yeah, on you want to do every the side. fully covered thing. If I had that burger, you know what I'm getting? Diarrhea, stomach ache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna hurt my stomach. And uh, we, uh, the movie ends abruptly. Um, we don't see Anya Taylor Joy get diarrhea. So this movie on a fit. broken down boat. <laughs> yes, that's not like she might. That that could be her she last die, meal. Yeah. yeah. Hope that hope that boat has a working bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see it again. It's not great. It's a uh, 90 Rotten Tomatoes that score. That is insanely high. I'm insanely very spr- high. So I truly think I'm like I don't think that a lot of these critics have seen a lot of like Saw movies yeah, or like Blumhouse movies where yeah it, you know what if there is like a couple movie critics at at a publication they're probably sending like the lesser of the two. To go see a Saw movie yep. and review it. And then, like, the top critic, who would probably be sent to the menu because it's getting a ton of buzz, wouldn't be sent to, like, a Saw. So they're like, ooh, this is a fresh idea. <laughs> Saw's pissed. They're like, what the fuck? We shut off for Chris Rock. We don't get this prestige. Well, if... Chris Rock was not quite as good. <laughs> I think Chris Rock was like, people watch Saw movies no matter what. Word. And and there was, like, a point, like, a couple years ago, Chris Rock was just taking a check for everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it's a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes with a 79 audience score, and I'm kind of with the audience. Yeah, same. 100%. Initially, I... I'm in the 70s somewhere, for sure. Initially, I felt pressure to give it, like, an 81, and then the more I thought of it, I was like, no, like, trust your gut. It's It wasn't that good. Yeah. But it was solid. Three and a half on Letterboxd for me. So that's where I was going to go. Yeah, I was going to go and a three and a half. All right. Uh, you want to do anything else or you want to bang out this? Uh, I mean, how long have we got? 40 gone? minutes. 40 minutes? Yeah. I mean, we want to give you stuff to do during your Thanksgiving travels. So that's the carrot we'll dangle. Get on the Patreon. Listen to this bonus episode we're about to do. We love you. Have a great Thanksgiving. And if you don't do Thanksgiving, shout out Kyrie Irving. Actually, you probably shouldn't be saying shout out Kyrie yeah, Irving do these days. Uh, just have a wonderful week. We love you. Bye. Patreon. Everything is on sale. 
that you could get uh you could just get on there for five dollars bye